All right, people, I'm back again. I'm back again. Let's continue. Read from Acts chapter 10 to prove a point that all things work together who are called according to his purpose. He said, if you faint, not, right? But the thing is, he know the people that are called to his person, his chosen, are not going to faint. They're going to keep going. He knows this. The chosen don't lose. They always receive victory. Because they ain't designed to faint. Because he chose them. From the beginning. And he's going to make all things work out. Right? Do you understand? Now this is the thing. I'm not going to go in depth too much, but I'm going to go with whatever the Lord places on my mind to say. Yes, giving your life to Christ, you might come racist. But if he wants you, you ain't going to remain racist. You ain't going to remain in no form that's going to push inequity or praise things that God does not allow. You get, she's not gonna call you to push a racist agenda. Now, let me let me let me let me go back to a second. Let me go back a little bit. Now, if you're doing that, you might be called to do something else. He said some people are ordained to do evil from of old. Let's take Pharaoh for example. He was called to, to do what? Chastise the children of Israel. Bring hardships their way. And God hardened his heart to do just that. To prove a purpose. So you got two kinds of callings. If you're evil, be evil still. Pharaoh is a prime example, be evil still. There's no helping you. So I'm going to just let you stay hard. Actually, I'm going to make you harder than you are. Because you're already evil. They're going to keep you evil. Ain't no change in you. It is what it is. You serve your purpose, Pharaoh. You serve your, your purpose, everybody who tried to come up against Daniel. You serve your purpose, everybody who came against Samson. You serve your purpose. Everybody that came against David, you served your purpose. Some people's purposes are to be children of the devil. Oh, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but it's true. Some people don't work for God. They work for the devil. That's why the Bible says you would know them by their fruits. So when a preacher gets up there and preach something contrary to the word, you know they might be ordained to mislead. Oh, yeah, I'm going there today. I'm going there today. I don't care if you like it or not. Just because somebody in the pulpit don't necessarily mean it was put there by God. Yeah, all things work together for those who believe and love God and call according to his purpose. But that don't mean everybody that's in the pulpit was put there by God. How do you know that? Because Jesus said so. When they say, haven't I done this and that in your name? I didn't put you there. I don't even know you. What you doing? Yo, you, you been up there for that long. I still don't know who you are. Who are you? Bye. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let me tell you something, people. Before you take that foot on that pedestal, you better make sure you call. You better make sure it's God that called you up there. Do you understand? You better make sure. You understand? Everybody's not called to preach the gospel. Everybody's not called to baptize people in the Holy Spirit. How do you know that? Because the Holy Spirit is not being spread throughout all the churches like it should. If the Holy Spirit was being spread like it was in, a, in the days of his disciples, everybody would be coming out of the church a whole new person. But I don't see that. Because there's a lot of people that's preaching unrighteousness or contrary to the word of God, contrary to the will of God. They said Noah was a preacher of righteousness. 
righteousness lines up with the word. Anything other than the word, if it don't line up the word, it's not righteousness. God is love. God is love. Come as you are. Come as you are. But you're not going to remain that way. Did you hear what I said? You're going to come as you are to Christ. But you're not going to remain the same way you were called. Proof. Come as you are, fishermen. But you ain't finna fish no more. I'm finna make you a fisher of men. You, you got time for fishing. Proof. Paul, come as you are, Paul. But you ain't finna persecute my people no more. You finna spread the truth now. I'm finna change your heart, Paul. I'm finna grow you. You used to persecute my people. So I call you to continue to persecute my people? No. I call you to change up and spread a different message than what you used to spread. Ha. Ah, does it make sense now? Does it make sense? All the prophets say what I want you to say. Not what you want to say. Say what the word says. You stick to the word and you will do good as a follower of Christ. You ask for the Holy Spirit, you will get it in some shape, form, or fashion. Everybody doesn't receive it the same way. You understand? Like I said, I haven't spoken in tongues yet. Not that I can recall. You understand? But I'm not finna get on here and lie and say I have. Nope. But he has given me understanding of the word. That's a gift too. And you've got a gift. As you can see, the dude was a band member. And he was already praising God and honoring God. Before he even received the Holy Ghost. This proves that he was called. But it's not always that way with everybody. Paul was persecuted. He already knew Torah. He knew the word. But he wasn't spreading it correctly. He was on the wrong end of the fence. He was falling after the Pharisees. And the Sadducees and the scribes. And God said, hey. I like you. I've been like you, Paul. Now for the to let you realize why I like you. Why I call you. You finna work for me. I like you from the beginning, man. And I'm glad. I, I taught you a lot of stuff with the scribes and Pharisees, didn't it? But they were teaching you wrong. So I'm finna give you the Holy Spirit. And I'm finna teach you the right way. But they were teaching you wrong. And if you would've kept going that path, you would've ended up in hell. Paul, but I'm gonna change you. In the case with the disciples, they weren't even thinking about serving God. They were thinking about fishing and providing for their family. Oh, yeah. Man, when he was thinking about preaching the word, then when Christ came, like, oh, my sheep know my voice. Who that is? Cast out a little further. But me, I already been out there, man, but I'm going to go, I'm gonna do it because you said so. You did it. You said it. I listened to you. Let me go out there. Did he change his whole life around from fishing to fishing for men you read the bible so many people before i formed you in the womb i ordained you i made you a prophet to the nations that's what he told jeremiah before i even formed you in the womb my thoughts towards you was already to work for me do you understand god knows the hearts and wisdom is justified of his people. Now, let me go somewhere with you people so you won't be misled. There are certain characteristics, there are certain things that follow the body of Christ. There's certain ways things should be. Why? So you won't be misled. 
Because if anybody can change the word of God, that doesn't that mean anybody can add to it. Anybody can say what they want. Well, I feel like this is how it should be. I feel because the times have changed. I'm a woman and I can preach the word. Well, if that's the case, you can say the devil saved. But the word doesn't say the devil saved. The words say the devil is awaiting eternal punishment and judgment. So I can't go against the grain and say even the devil is going to be in heaven again. I can't change the word like that. Nobody can. He said, don't add to my word or take away from it. You understand? People wonder why I push the word the way I do. Because it's the word. That's what he told me to do. I know women preachers like, why are you so hard on us? Because you know better. That's why. But it's okay. Like Jeremiah 531 said, because the love people love it so. The people love it this way. People like to be lied to. Having itching ears. You got women out there that would not listen to a man and save their life. So guess what they're gonna do? Go find him a woman teacher. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. I'm just being real with you. If a woman's in that pulpit, it's against God. The word says it. The word says it. The word gave characteristics. The word said it. You understand? That's why the word said, be not many teachers. Because you will face the greater condemnation. That go for me. Because I teach this word. So if I mess up and I mislead you, I might well get ready to go to hell too. But that's what I'm going to be. If I mislead you in regards to this word, I'm going to be weeping and gnashing the teeth where I don't want to go. So I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. I don't care if you like it. You better learn to love it. Because if you want the truth, that's the only way you can be made free from all this foolishness that's going on in this world. There are many false teachers, there are many false prophets, there are many false singers, there are many false gospels, there are many false things in this world. But one thing you can always stand on is the word of God. If you can't stand on the word of God, you can't stand on nothing. Because the word of God is designed to be truthful to you. And the Bible says so many times, no lies of God. So if somebody willing to get up there and be like they are sent by God, send it line up with the word of God if they were sent by him. Do you hear what I'm saying? If they were sent by God, shouldn't they, shouldn't they teachings line up with the word? If it don't line up the word, they might want to sent by him. It might have been sent by somebody else to mislead. But scripture speaks of this. Scripture speaks of this. If you got false prophets, that means you got real prophets. If you got false teachers, you got real teachers. That's why God giving you the sermon. He said, Peter, Paul summed it up like this. Uh, you need to go back to milk again. <laughs> you need to go back to milk. Start over. But you know, when you, uh, when you start eating meat, you're no longer a babe. You got your senses in order. You know to discern between good and evil. You see, God says, be like little children. But you got to understand, one thing about a little child is they don't see evil. But if you train up a child in the way it should go, he will know the difference between right and wrong. He will know evil and good, right? But a child that doesn't be trained up correctly, they're going to think everybody's good. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing to think everybody's good. But the truth of the matter, everybody is not. That's a fact. Everybody's not good. Why do you think a lot of kids get kidnapped? Because an evil person kidnapped them. And sometimes the case may have been the child might have been trusting in a childlike heart. And this evil person came and manipulated them. And it's beguiled them to get into that ice cream truck or whatever it may be 
So God doesn't want you to be that type of child. He wants you to be a child that knows right from wrong. Right? Yes, he wants you to have that child like love everybody no matter what. But even children are taught to be careful. Right? I think a lot of people got this misunderstood. You see, Peter was upset with one time what that dude name is, Bar Jesus or whatever his name was, the one that's walking around using sorcery, tricking people, and then he asked for the Holy Ghost and Peter was like, ha -ha, not you. Pray to God. Pray to God. I ain't even gonna try to give it to you because you're already a trickster. So I'm not even gonna give you the Holy Ghost. You pray to God. That's the last you heard of his story. He didn't receive it. He tried to buy it. Can I buy the Holy Ghost? Nah, you already on the wrong path. You trying to buy something that's given to you freely. Your heart already in the wrong place. Buy the Holy Ghost. Basically, Peter rebuked him and didn't give him the Holy Ghost. That's called discernment. That's called discernment. But the thing is, if he rebuked him and then give it to him, that was the will of God. Because someone right with him. Just like when that's when Peter, when Paul went somewhere and tried to try to tell this one ruler some things in the sorcerer over there, trying to make Paul look bad, and Paul struck him with blindness. Blue, you don't know what you're talking about. See, you. see you later. No weapon of form against me shall prosper. You see, this sorcerer man was trying to keep mislead the king. And God sent Paul Peter to open the king's eyes to this sorcerer. That's why the sorcerer had to be rebuked and blinded. Because he was blinding many other people. Let them alone to be blind leaders of the blind. But the king was trying to be to have his eyes open. So God sent Paul his way. He cast that demon away from him. Cast that sorcerer out of his presence so he can learn the truth the right way. Don't you want the right truth? You understand? I know people are like, why are you always talking about homosexual? Well, a, homo a homosexual preacher is not leading the people correctly. How can that be? I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. How you feel with the Holy Ghost and you ain't holy? You, you can't say that. I know you ain't, cause you sleeping with a man. I know you're defiled. Your own actions say it. He said the only sin that's inside the body is sexual sin. So you can't be married to a man and think it's not sexual sin. Or a woman and think it's not sexual sin. It is. And you can't be in a pulpit like that. What makes you think God is the, the father of manipulation? All that does is make other homosexuals flock to that church and never change. Forever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because that false teacher that's up there saying it's okay. Do you understand how false teachers and false preachers Manipulate the word and beguile many and trick many? Don't you understand why it's so dangerous? Why, don't you understand that's why the apostles talk about it so much in the New Testament? To be watchful, to be ready, to pay attention, to test the spirits, all this stuff. He wants you to be like a child. You know, I love kids who won't come to everybody. <laughs> you know, some kids, they just, uh, Hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. That's cool too. But I like kids that like, ah, I do not know you. <laughs> Who are you? You don't like my daddy, my mama, <laughs> or my uncle? Ah, I like those type of kids that scream. You understand? That's how you want to be. Not mean with it. 
But at the same time, a kid, some kids got to get to know you. Just like you got to get to know people. You can't just invite everybody to your house. Oh, I met them one day. You can stay with me. Then they destroy your whole home because you're so kind-hearted. It has no discernment at all. Let me pause now. We'll continue.